When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here's your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and Cassie Cruz. All you gotta do is sing a song. Hello, everybody. I am Susie Singer-Carter. And I am Cassie Cruz, and this is Love Conquers Alls the podcast where we take a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's. We keep it real and we keep it really, really positive and we share feelings, fears, frustrations. And the latest news and resources. And super great guests. guests. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a uh, super yes. great guest today. I'm we super do. excited to hear from her. Oh my God. I know. I feel like I've known her and I've never stood in the same room, but we we connected via Alzheimer's and I'm talking about Whitney Glandon and Whitney is based in New York City. She's a, a dance artist, a senior living program director, instructor, producer, choreographer, and practically born into the senior living community. I'm not kidding. She'll tell you. Um, she's grown up surrounded by senior adults on a day-to-day -day basis, and she continues to do that in a glorious way. Welcome, Whitney. Hi, thank Hi. you. I'm Hi. so excited to be here. How did you get started, Whitney? Well, um, I was literally born in a senior living community. Uh, my grandmother uh, started some of the first long-term care communities uh, in North Carolina in 1958. What? At that time, yes. At that time, they were called family care homes. And she had always wanted to be a, become a doctor, but didn't have the money to go to school. Uh, but she, she was a really brilliant woman. I'm loving and, her. Oh, she sounds wonderful. Yeah, she was extraordinary. And someone that I looked up to and I spent so much of my life with every day. What is her name? Tell us her name. Her, her name is her name was Thelma Moore and she passed away about 20 years ago. Uh, but I, I do feel like she's uh, watching me kind of one of my guardian angels. And uh, she always said to me as a little girl, she said, uh, you know, you will be in this field one day. And I really didn't know what she was talking about. Uh, you know, as a little kid, I mean, I, I did, I, I literally grew up in the senior living community. She built five of them from the ground up. Oh she did the floor plans. What? Uh, yeah, she was incredible. She was incredible. And my mom. Selma, is, we love you. Thank you. I know, right? <laughs> right? She was way ahead of her time, way ahead. And so my mom, the youngest of her brothers and sisters who were much older, my mom grew up in the senior living communities, the five that my grandmother had built. So my mom grew up surrounded by seniors as well. And then uh, she went on to become the activity director when she got older. And, she, you know, she married my dad and my dad. They both became administrators for the state of North Carolina for long term care. Wow. And then my uncle got into the business and he actually was president of long term care for North Carolina for a few years. He still to this day has a 200 bed nursing home in North Carolina. So, what an amazing wow. family. And I just want to understand something. Were you, did you actually live at these centers as well or just close to them? And then well, you were always we there? had, I, I feel like I practically lived there. I mean, we had our own house. My parents still live in the same house that they've lived in for 40 something years. But this, one of the senior living communities was right next door to us. And the other four were up the street, less than a half a mile. So it was so, just like you were all together, one big yes. community, and you and felt like a village. That was your village. That was your community. Absolutely. That's what your grandmother did. So it was all generations together. Yes. And I see, my that. parents. Yeah, it was amazing. because That's amazing. That's exactly I mean, what we need. The great example for, for living. Exactly. And so, you know, these were like, it was like having bonus grandparents, like tons of them. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So, it's I mean, very kibbutzly. It's kibbutz-like. Exactly. 
And at, at the age of nine, you were what? What were you doing? So at the first- age of nine, I had been ob- observing my mom teach. Uh, at that time, it was called jazzercise. Mm-hmm. And she, <laughs> she was teaching these amazing jazzercise classes. And I would go and watch and participate. The equivalent of Zumba today. Yes, exactly. Yes. And after observing her instructing these exercise classes, um, I did, I was like, I want to do this. So my mom said, okay, well, she would go and get me a radio. And it was kind of like I had a captive audience, you know, <laughs> and all the seniors knew me. They knew me from a, a tiny baby. And so I would get in there and start doing movements and they were, they would copy me. I would be like, okay, do this, do that, do this to music. And I love the fact that they were engaging with me and I was going off of their energy. They were going off of my energy and I started leading classes. That was like my thing. Oh, but also- Whitney, Whitney, I just want to say something. It's so, I think it's so beautiful because one of the things I found like getting, once I started really re- getting immersed into the community, realizing how few children come and when they do there is a lot of fear right yes for who for who for the children why because they're not used to be, being around older people exactly they right. need and to be we need to include everybody again mm-hmm. absolutely. we need to get back to that absolutely and so you know when i was doing these classes then but i was also my parents led you know all they hosted all the events they led the activities and they would give me daily chores, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I was sweeping the floor. I was washing dishes. I was learning to do, I, I had a lot of responsibility, which at a very young age, having that responsibility and being around people of all ages, it taught me so much and it set me up really for, you know, for what I'm doing today. Did you love that you had that experience or do you feel that you were burdened? No, I loved every moment of it. It, I am so thankful that I grew up in such a unique environment. It taught me so much discipline. It taught me respect for, for others, even though I, I didn't really realize that the seniors were so much older <laughs> than, than I was. They were my friends. They, right. were, they were family because right. my parents created this this beautiful environment, my parents and my grandmother, um, of, you know, we shared meals together. I would help set the table because it was a small, these were small spaces, you know, not like the large senior living communities like that I work in today, but which is great, but it's very different. It was a, it was a family, family setting. And it, it really did set me up for, I feel like, for success today in my own life and what I'm doing with my seniors now uh, in a very different, similar setting, but on a larger scale, on a grander scale. You know, my, my grandmother had, um, you know, people, the workers, you know, people who would run the, the communities that would live in each of the, the homes, the houses. And then sometimes, you know, people would just decide, okay, I don't want to do this anymore and leave. So my parents would have to go in and live inside, live in the community, cook the food, uh, do all the medication management. I mean, my parents, they did everything. So there were many times where maybe in the middle of the night, I'd hear my parents, you know, get up and say, oh, we, we got to head over to, you know, such and such just left. You know, and I remember going during the night with my parents to the community and like camping out there and helping prep breakfast the next morning, helping with with lunch, you know, doing the chores. But my parents, we were so involved. I, you know, I kind of thought everybody did that. When you went to school, you went you weren't homeschooled, right? Correct. I was not. OK, so you, when you would go to school and you had friends over, did they find it strange? Yes, they were scared. They were actually yeah. scared of the seniors. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just didn't, I, I didn't really understand that. Not all of them, but there were, I can remember quite a, you know, there were about three or four friends that when I did take them to the senior living community, they, they were really frightened. Or repelled. It was, there's like a ooh factor. And I think 
I think it's that to me that that is heartbreaking. And when my mother was first into a uh, assisted living, and I remember some of the caregivers had their children with them, there'd be five year olds who go, you know, and one of the one of the residents may be agitated and, and a little five year old, but just step right in because they understood and they mm-hmm. want to help and they want to help and they want to be part. And as long as we make it okay and fun and interesting, that's the experience you had that it was all normal. It was right. You were you. They were your friends. You cared for them. You uh, took care of them. And they also then imparted knowledge or fun or, you know, and was that really cool for you when they followed your movement? Because I want to talk about movement and music yeah, and that absolutely. type of stuff. That's that connectivity that all of us have inside of us. Music connects us. Movement connects us. Yes. I'm a dancer like you're a dancer. Probably not exactly like you're a dancer, but I know Susie's a dancer. And uh, movement connects me to me. That's it right. totally does. Wait one on that because we got so much to talk about a dance. Beautiful. And so we need to take a break. Okay. Okay. You're listening to Love Conquers. Alls will be back with Whitney Glendon after this. We're back. Yay! Yay. And you're listening to Love Conquers <laughs> Alls with us. <laughs> with us. I'm Susie Singer Carter, then Cassie Cruz, and we're speaking with Whitney Glendon, who's a dance artist who is in the senior living community and industry and has so much so much knowledge to share with us. And we are going to talk about how she's incorporated her dance and movement with her long-term care communities. We want to talk about your latest project called Caught. Okay. Yeah. You started at nine teaching, like leading movement classes, right? Yes. With seniors. And then then where did it go from there in terms of dance? So from there, um, I, I was in college. So I went into college and, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, I've got to keep I've got to keep seniors somehow in my life, you know, when I was in my uh, getting my dance degree and I was at Columbia College in South Carolina. And for my junior practicum, um, I had started volunteering at a local assisted living facility uh, and I started teaching a, a movement class. Um, for seniors, mainly the majority of the seniors in the class had Alzheimer's and other related dementias. And, you know, I started doing that. And then even after I graduated, I continued to keep teaching this class. Now, I got I was so inspired uh, immensely by by five specific ladies and their spirit to thrive and they had severe severe alzheimer's and by the end of um that year i choreographed a modern dance piece for uh one of the concerts at our college and i incorporated these five women wait they physically were part of your yes. performance yes Oh my. I had I had to coax one of the ladies the night of the show when the senior living community was bringing them to the theater. Yeah. I had to coax one of the ladies with a chocolate bar on to get her on stage. on stage. Did you did, was that part of the performance then as well? Did that become yeah. part of it? Um, not the, not the chocolate bar, yeah. but the, once she got on stage. Then she remembered? De- well, yeah, dementia was gone. It was gone. You're kidding and me. This so is, basically this- she, re- so you had to get her on the stage with the chocolate bar because she had yes. no idea. What- and then as soon as the movement started or the music started yes. for yes. your piece, she got in line. Yes. Let me tell you, these five women were incredible. And I had them placed on the stage. And when they saw me and when they got on the stage with the lighting, with the music, it it was, I mean, it was very simple movement. And it was more about the engagement. I, I didn't really care what they did as long as they were present on the stage. There was not a dry eye in the theater. So many people came up to me and was like, oh, God, you know, this makes me think of my grandmother. Um, you know, my grandmother has Alzheimer's or my grandfather has Alzheimer's, you know, wh- whatever. It, it stirred up so much emotion and it was, but they trusted me and we had developed a beautiful bond and trust that was, that was unbreakable. And the experience, uh, gave these five women, I feel a purpose to be seen and accepted by others and showed that just because one is living with memory loss, you don't have to be divine, defined by your disease. Ah, that's great. That's beautiful. Yeah. It gave me an idea from that, that little performance. 
that I did at school, uh, I think this was the year two, 1999, 2000, uh, gave me the idea that when I moved to Manhattan, I said, I'm going to do something on an even grander scale. And I had the idea, and that's where my Tuesdays at four, the creative dance art group that I started here in Manhattan 10 years ago, which is still running to this day, um, that that specific dance piece back in 1999 gave me the idea to start my Tuesdays at four class, which I am doing to this present day here in mm. the city. Can you tell us about Tuesdays at four? Yes. So um, Tuesdays at four was started um, 10 years ago. And it uh, it's a group, uh, a class that I had started with two other people, uh, two other like-minded individuals, um, Marnie and Frank, uh, that worked with me at that at that time at, at the senior living community. Um, this and is our in New York. Mission, this is in yes, New York. Yes, yes, here, yes, here in New York. And um, so our mission statement is to bring generations together through various forms of dance, art, poetry, improvisation. Uh, theater and music inspired by stories and personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And we centered the whole group around the motif of support, uh, delving deeper into our own creativity and imagination, free of judgment. Uh, so can I wanted... come? I want to come too. <laughs> yes. I want you to come to LA and do that here so that we can, because I, I would love amazing to do that. seniors. I would love <laughs> to do that. Oh, we're going to have to make I, a branch out here then. That's what we're going to have to do. Oh, I be amazing. would love to do that. Um, so we started, so we started this group. So the reason we called it Tuesdays at four, we, we tried to, we went through all these different names, but every Tuesday it was a surprise. Our seniors, and then I had 20 outside volunteers that were helping as well, that wanted to be a part of the group. So it was a huge class and every week we wouldn't tell people what we were going to do. So it became this thing, like a surprise. What's going to happen during Tuesdays at four? And the, the residents, the seniors were like, let's just call it Tuesdays at four. And I said, okay, that's it. Done. And you know, what's poignant about that is the, the whole idea of like four o'clock being the sundown time. Yes. It, right. Right. <laughs> And we, yes. and we had people, you know, uh, we had a whole mixture of, of seniors in the group. We, we had, we had people at that time when I started it, there were a few with Alzheimer's. There were quite a, you know, the majority didn't have, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, but it was a beautiful mixture. And now though, the class, which, you know, sadly, a, a lot of the people from my original group passed away. I still mm -hmm. have two people from the original group. One is a hundred and one is 103. Oh, jeez! Wow. Yes. And they, and they will say to this day, the 103 year old, the hundred year old right now is got severe dementia, but the 103 year old to this day will tell you that Tuesdays at four gave her, uh, the will to live. <gasps> and, the, and the lady who is a hundred now who has a little bit of dementia, we did a flash mob in Union Square and we made all the major news stations like not nine years ago. And to this day, even though with the dementia that she has, when she sees me, she knows that I she's like, it's Whitney and we danced and there were cops. And when she says <laughs> cops, she means the cops that were protecting us during our flash mob here in Manhattan in Union Square. And and some people are like, cops, it's impactful. what is she talking it's impactful about? what you're doing. I said, well, what she's talking about, I said, she knows exactly what she's talking about. She was part of the security team. I made her like part of the security team with all the cops here <laughs> in our flash mob. And to this day, at 100 years old with a little dementia, she still says, Whitney and dancing and cops. We had cops. I said, you're right. We did have the NYPD. <laughs> that that's so that is so freaking beautiful. I love that. But I love it so much. You and have we went on to do like all these different shows and all these really beautiful venues here in Manhattan. And and now, you know, of course the group evolves. It's been ten it's ten years. And so now the majority of people in our group now have memory loss. And um, 
you, it, but it's like when you, when you're dancing, when you have dance and you have music, there is no dementia. Correct. It's, they're present. It they are them, so it brings present. Them, it brings them to their source and then brings them at this moment. What's interesting to me is that I know because my mother was a singer and, and I always talk about the, the, the magic of music and how that's to this day my mom's Alzheimer's is pretty severe now. But, and the way that I can get into a conversation if there is one to be had, I use music. And so I imagine that the music cues the memory of the movement. A absolutely. And you find what people's strengths are. Right. So, yeah. We, and in our class, how do we set people up for success? That is what we're looking to do. Right. We're not looking to say, oh, well, they can't remember this or they can't remember that. It's never do you remember? We never say, do you remember? It, it's it, it's all about being in the present moment. That that's what every class that we do. It's and what about is possible. What is exactly possible at that moment for them? Right. Let's mm -hmm. find what they can do. Mm -hmm. How are we going to set them up for success? That's what it's all about. Do you work with people in chairs? Yes. At all? Oh, we oh. have a lot of people. Um, we have people who can stand and move, and then we have people in wheelchairs. Um, and we, we encourage everybody to move. So everybody doesn't, doesn't matter if you have a walker, a wheelchair, a cane, we use the walkers in our dances. We use the wheelchairs in our movement. Ooh. We use the canes. Um, it, we use, everybody can move. Everybody can create, everybody can dance and everybody is equal and yes. they are not the same, but everybody's equal. And I love that how much you are loving and and making that loving community and making that space because not only just for seniors in that situation setting people up to to succeed that's like a that's a recipe for just everybody in life absolutely that's what you just shared with us i'm super impressed with all the love and and the efforts that you've put to make that happen really coming starting from your grandmother great uh, yeah it, it it all started for my grandmother and um, another thing that we, we talk about in, in our class and that also one reason I started Caught Dance Project, uh, the, the full name of the piece is Caught Between Two Worlds because one of my senior adults uh, who, who recently passed at the age of 99, but he had dementia, and he said to me one day, he said, Whitney, it's, it's like I'm caught between two worlds. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we had already started working on this project. And I was like, God, that that's the name of this piece. And mm -hmm. because it's so many of them, it, it is, it's, I mean, we don't know, we don't have Alzheimer's, so we really can't say, I mean, he was telling me exactly in, in a very clear moment for him, how it felt. And I try to put myself in their, in their shoes, in their place of, of like, what would that feel like? And but one of the reasons we started Caught Dance Project is to learn how to be comfortable with the uncomfortable, right? So so many I, I, I've observed so many times people, you know, families, friends uh, interacting with their loved one or with you know with a friend who may have this disease, and they're it's super uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable because we don't know we don't right. know what that looks like and how to how to respond. Exactly. We're embarrassed and, or ashamed or feel guilty and all those feelings that are, are not pleasant. Right. Right. And, and so a colleague of mine who, who helped start a uh, caught dance project with me, Jody, uh, who we work, she's Alzheimer's specialist and we walk, we work very closely together and she helps co-lead Tuesdays at four with me uh, right now. Um, we, we, as I mentioned before, we are always trying to set people up for success, you know, in, in our classes. And then when we started caught dance project, um, of trying to, to show people that in our dance, this dance piece that we did, which is, it's an emotional dance piece. that tells the story of one woman's journey through her world of advancing dementia of how you can still connect with people. You can still have a friendship 
with someone with dementia or Alzheimer's just because maybe they don't remember what they ate yesterday or they may not remember what you said five minutes ago. It doesn't mean that you can't have a loving friendship with or someone. Or even if they don't remember you. Yeah. Or even if they don't remember, if it gets, when it gets to that point, if they don't, they can feel your energy. Right. Yep. They, they, intention. Yes. And they know, they know if you're real or not. If you're genuine, you, you only have to look at a baby, a brand new baby, which I have one in our lives now. My daughter had a has a baby and you look at it and it's all very Zen and it's and they don't you know, it's it there's there's no relationship yet. And we're forming a relationship and and you can't have expectations. I don't have any expectations other than I love this little soul <laughs> right right now right yes and i think it's a great it's a great metaphor for you know someone with d dementia and alzheimer's is that you know as as babies gain our 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 loved ones that have alzheimer's and dementia are losing their wane exactly and so we if we can just look at it like that with the same kindness that we look at a baby absolutely that's, and that's the way i that's the way I look at my mother now. And I just say, for any time she gives me something, it's like, oh, look, the baby smiled. Well, oh, look, my mom just said, I love you. Right. How great is that? Exactly. It, 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 it causes you, I mean, you, you have to be present in that moment. So and it's, it hard happens, being, it's hard being present sometimes because it is. We, our minds are so filled with this. We must do this task. We must do that. That's how this looks. Oh, we need. And this. oh, what will, what will everybody oh. else think? And how am I going to fit into that? Those are right. the traps of not being present. And it's mm -hmm. well, the traps of society and our social, well, the way we're socially formed. And I think what you're doing, Whitney, is such a gift because it's giving people a, a it's, it's it's changing the conversation, which is so important about aging and and in all in all aspects of aging, and that you know there that we need to embrace it because we are all heading there. That's right, and and we need to understand it and not be afraid of it because it's natural. And right. beyond that, I want to say thank you for showing us what love really looks like, what <laughs> you're showing and what you're doing. That and what your grandma did and what your parents did and what they built and the community, they're showing us what love really looks like. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, I just, like I said, I say thank you to my parents. Thank you to my grandmother, to my uncle who is still in this, in this field, you know, Amazing. and it just, I, I feel right at home with my seniors and it's beautiful. You know, yeah. It's my calling. I, I it's really beautiful. feel like and it's my gift. It's it's our it's our gift to be able to uh, see that too. And thank you for sharing that gift with us. And I, I want to um, ask you a question about sundown time because we talked. You mentioned that, and I want to discuss that in one second, right after this break. Hey, we're back, and you're listening to Love Conquers Alls. I'm Susie Singer Carter, and you're listening to me and my co-host, the lovely Cassie Cruz. And we're speaking with Whitney Glandon. You're doing Tuesdays at four in New York City. This is um, a, a prime time in in, in the seniors' uh, day. Um, sundowning. Yes, um, I've been in min many a memory care unit at that time, and you do you start to see people. They get extremely agitated, wandering. Um, the the want to go home, to get out, to uh, looking for things. Uh, becomes um, uh, it becomes worse around that time. So you chose that specific time to do something uh, to redirect that energy and that source of loss or whatever they might be looking for, which is probably they want to probably go home to go to bed or they want to shut down or however they want to, you know, in their day, right? Or however that is, like wrapping their day up or something. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but... Well, you, I feel like that time kind of chose us ah. because we were trying to figure out a time 
to do the group and four o'clock just seemed to be, I mean, I'm just being strictly, just completely honest with you here. Four o'clock seemed like the best time to do it for everyone. But for the, for the people who do it, it's interesting that it did kind of happen at that time because now so many of the people in the group uh, do have memory loss, you know, or, or early stages of memory loss or Alzheimer's. Um, it, it does give them a redirection at that time in the group, you know, so they're, they're getting music, they're getting dance. So if they were in their apartment, um, at that time on a Tuesday, now they're getting music and dance and other things to redirect them. I, I think it's fantastic because they are then reconnecting, um, in a, in a loving way, in a, in a way that, uh, touches them that they can be, become present. Right. Right. And have purpose. Yeah. There's a purpose. Yeah. We all want yeah. purpose in our lives. That's right. It, it gives people a sense of belonging, of importance, of, oh. of family. Oh, we're, yeah, so we, we're a family in the group. Oh. Uh, people start to begin, people start to feel youthful, uh, happy, free, uh, you know, as we, we work together to build trust. And, you know, I want to tell you one, one quick story. If we have time, we do. Yes. Um, we had a man, he since then passed away, but he was in the group, uh, for eight years and he had Alzheimer's, uh, and we did this movement phrase and everybody was learning the movement phrase and we ended up making a show and, and, and doing it here in the city. But what was so beautiful from this movement phrase is this man who hardly said anything in the class, uh, he would see other seniors in the community, whether it was in the dining room, in the hall, and he would do this specific movement from the phrase when he saw them in other places and they would uh. do the movement <laughs> back to him. And it was like, they, they even came to me and they said, it's like we have our own password, you know. It's fabulous. For, it's, sign la it's sign language with your body. Yes. And he remembered it. So it was showing you people can learn with this disease. People can still learn just because they have Alzheimer's and dementia. It does not mean that they can't learn because when he would see us, he would do that movement every time he saw one of us from the group and he remembered all of us from the class. Uh, wow. Please remember, this is so great for everyone listening because I know a lot of people think, why do I visit? They're not going to remember, you know, um, it, they're, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. What Whitney's saying is so valuable. It's so important. It's just redefining how you look at your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife, your sister, brother, whoever it is, you, they're, you just have to redefine how their life is now and how you can lean into that life and, and work with what they have because it's just, you still can communicate. You still can have joy and you can have fun. Absolutely. And you can have, you can, you can connect your hearts connect. Your intention is important as you said. And, um, that, and you will, you get so much back. I get so much back when I go to visit, not just my mom, but all of the residents that I touch that connect with me. I, I love them very, very much. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. So now where, where do people get to see your show? Well, um, Tuesdays at four, we don't have a performance of that happening right now. Um, but with caught our caught dance project, we're actually, um, we just did a show at Dixon Place Theater here in Manhattan. Um, and then earlier in the year, we did a show uh, in South Carolina. Um, but right now we're looking to, we're looking for another venue actually to, to uh, perform caught. Um, but we are working, we're about to start fundraising for a dance film that we're going to do a caught dance project film. Oh, exciting. Exciting. Yeah. And then you, and make, you'll make sure you let us know so we can tell all our listeners where Absolutely. the show is performing so we can, I, and I'm coming out to New York to watch it. Yeah. We've got to get you out here though, too. I would love to come to LA. Oh, and, we got to make, we, we got to work on that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we can do our caught piece. Um, sometime in LA at, at an event. Okay. Let's make that, that happen. I like that idea. Let's done. We got three, 
power. We're, we're like go girls. We'll get it done. Let's <laughs> yeah. Do it. It's, it's do it. what's really cool about our project. The, the lady that I'm dancing with, the other dance artist, is my former dance professor from college Aww. that I'm dancing in the piece with. She and I um, together choreographed it. So it's, you know, so she saw when I did all the work in school with the Alzheimer patients, it's kind of funny how life is full circle, just comes right back around. And now we're working together on this really great piece. I love it. Whitney, you're amazing. We need more time with you. We're going to have to, we're going to continue this and keep checking in with you and see what's happening with Cod and your film. Whitney, thank you for being you. And I thank your grandmother for just teaching you how to love people and be there. Um, we are so and your grateful. parents. All the extended parents and grandparents that you had. <laughs> seniors yes. in your life. And, and of course, we thank you, our listeners. And we hope that you liked our show. Yes. And if you did, share with other people, subscribe, and also send us any ideas that you want to talk about, things that are bothering you, fears, guilt, whatever, and we're, we'll, we'll try to address it. And you can message us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And please remember, love is powerful, and love is contagious, and love conquers all. All you gotta all. do is sing a song. All you gotta do is sing a song. Mm-hmm.